Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League as well. Coming live from California, I'm Robbie Musto and he's Robbie Earl and here are today's topics. Ralph Radnick's Man United drop points at Turf Moor. Impressive Southampton dominant over lacklustre Spurs. Arsenal get back to winning ways at Wolves. Diogo Jota scores again as Liverpool beat a toothless Leicester. Man City go nine points straight at the top of the table with a win versus Brentford. And Newcastle get out of the relegation zone after scoring three past Everton. All that coming up in today's episode. Robbie, oh my friend, we are here in California, mm. mate. Living the dream, mm-hmm. living the dream. Stunning weather. Uh, very lucky to be around the SoFi Stadium for the Super Bowl on Sunday. It's mm. very cool to be around it. We had a look in the stadium yesterday, which is an incredible, incredible stadium mm. when you actually get inside and see how it's kind of, it's actually underground. The pitch yeah, the level is fantastic underground. And, yeah, it's I mean, like it's a bowl superb. underground. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd just like to say, uh, Mossy, before, so you're welcome. This is oh, California. Right. This is where oh, you're well. You're welcome, my friend. This is this is where we live. This is what we do. Yeah, this is where you come from, mate. This is where, <laughs> there where you, you go. Fly back on a Monday after a show or something or a weekend, you're like, yeah. mm, I'm going to go back take, to like seventy. Take the dogs and, down on the beach and yeah, yeah I'm going to be shoveling snow you're, probably in Connecticut. Well, you got to know you got to know your position in life, my friend, and I yeah. think we know ours. Well, Let's right. get to the football. Uh, right. Burnley face Manchester United at Turf Moor, Burnley team that was struggling for wins and they won all season, a Manchester United team that were struggling to put, I think, consistency that people have, have, have thought together, Rob. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Ralph Ragnick's coming to the football club, obviously Ollie's gone, Michael Carrick's moved on, and he's, he's somewhat, I don't know if it's a club, I don't know if it's a situation, I don't know if we're Manchester United or all, but he's, he's almost become, not through his own making, he's quite a divisive Personality hasn't he, Ralph Ragnick? Some kind of enjoying what he's doing and can see the work, and others are like, well, are they really much better? Is there much improvement? There seems to be this that follows around Manchester United. People are either, it's not much better than it was before, or actually, let's give this guy time. It looks like there's, there's some platform and a basis for something to grow grow, grow on. Yeah, and on, on that, um, I thought, you know, the first 45 minutes of Manchester United, Rob, we both sat in the studio, we both watched them play, fast start, good football. Yeah. Um, you know, Paul Pogba scores a really good goal, I think on the 19th minute, and it was a good performance. I, and I know I know it changed in the second half, and they, and they couldn't handle Burnley's kind of high energy, really, really stepped up the pace for Burnley at home. They aren't, they aren't actually good at Turf Moor, you know, keep yeah. talk, people talk about how Burnley uh, <laughs> are so great at Turf Moor. They've won one game all season. So they haven't been great at Turf Moor. And United couldn't handle it. And Harry Maguire, Rob, I thought struggled, struggled. Mm. Now, in general, and I don't mind Harry Maguire, thinking of Rafael Varane coming to the football club, a partnership, they're kind of different the way that they play. Yeah. This could be good. This could work out. You know, Maguire goes, heads everything, and, and gets to the ball and pressures the ball and attacks the ball, and Varane's quicker more intelligent player reads it can sweep up i liked i liked the thought of the combination now you know Maguire's had some bad times had some good times we had quite a lot of bad times another bad yeah. game for him rob and i gotta be honest yeah. i'm starting to think well is he good enough like is he i don't know he's a captain and i know an england international mm. and, I, and i know you know he's a great lad and everything else but the way that burnley it was big uh, veg horse, wasn't it? That turned him yeah, yeah. And then he couldn't get, he looked slow getting back to try and stop that Burnley goal going in. Mm. Um, I want to get onto other stuff about Ragnick, but just, just on Harry Maguire, Rob, are we, you know, we don't want to be the ones that jump on a player when he's no. back in the, when he's been out for a little while, he's back in a team. I think I've been pretty patient with Harry Maguire. I know the United fans, a lot of them really don't rate Maguire. Mm. I'm starting to think now, wow, like this is another one, another game where, you know, they didn't play great second half. They should hold on there. They shouldn't concede a goal. You know, what, where, where are you standing with Maguire and his, I don't know, his quality to be a, a, a first choice centre-back at Manchester United? Um, if I'm honest, from the start, I've never been a total buy-in to, to Harry Maguire. I think he's, he's a great guy. I think he does his best in, in terms of what, how he captains his football club. Um, I don't think he's athletic enough, Rob. I think he's had a number of partners. We've seen him with uh, Rafael Varane now, who should be the, 
the Rolls Royce partner next to him and can do the things that he wants to do. It doesn't necessarily look all that much better. Um, listen, you pay the, the kind of money they paid for him. I think you and, and you give him the captaincy. I think you try and work him through and work him in the position. But he's never really been. I got to be honest, Rob. He's never really been from the day they signed him from Leicester City. He was never really one of those that that took me. He's had his moments where he's looked better, obviously with possession, plays out. Maybe in a three might suit him better than a two. But in, in this league, when you say you're going to Burnley uh, and Wick Horst, who's just come, um, come into, the, into the, the, the league, and the quality of forwards that you've got, if, if Manchester United have to keep, or you're saying, if, if there's a position where we have to keep worrying about your centre-back, that's not going to bring you success. Manchester City... Won titles based off the Vincent companies and now the Ruben DSCs and the Ports and Stones, etc. Liverpool, go and get Van Dyke. We'll see what the difference is. You know, the Chelsea teams that won things with JT and, and, and whoever his partners were in the past. We've always known that back to. I'm not sure Harry Maguire is ever going to be talked of at that level. And that's a worry down the road. It's not the most important thing right now for Manchester United. But I think down the road, that could off. be a worry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I want to revisit the game a little bit, Rob, because obviously the game goes on. You know, you make notes, you have thoughts about what yeah. you're seeing. Mm-hmm. First of all, the thing I see is 4 3 3. Bruno is a number eight. Paul Pogba is yeah. a number eight. McTominay holding. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Like it. Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't mm-hmm. like that? Bruno, uh, Bruno, maybe he'd prefer to be a little bit more central as a number 10, but he has the ability to get back and get forward into the box and create things. Same with Paul mm-hmm. Pogba, Rob. We, we didn't see him a lot for Manchester United in his time playing you know in a 4-3-3 one of the wider ones yeah. that can get forward yeah. up and down box to box a little bit if you like um so you know the start was very very good i thought it was a very energetic start i thought it was a very creative start i thought it was a well-balanced uh team performance I, you know at, at 45 minutes i'm i'm making notes like look like a team no drama at the back like everything under control so, you know really really mm-hmm. impressive mm-hmm. and you know i've said for a f- couple of weeks now rob maybe a little bit more than that that it's different this is better manchester united and i know that i go on social media and and people's comments and the, and the the websites the newspapers are full of you know who's next uh, the players want pochettino the players doesn't want him they want him they want this guy or which i which i which i'm you know it's here safe for staff by the way but i think people are starting to think that ragnick's not great and we'll get somebody else mm. it's going to be pochettino as if there's some kind of magic guy that's going to come in and have a balanced team that defends well, that wins the ball back well, that creates and scores a ton of goals. Not easy. I'm saying it again. There, there is still signs that he is worth going in the right direction. Stat for you, Rob. 30 shots in the last three games in all competition is just three goals. 70 Se- shots. 70, 70 shots. Did I yeah. say 30? Yeah, it's 70, so. 70, 70 shots. 70 shots. Yeah. yeah. Three goals in mm. the last three in all competitions. Now, I know yeah. the position wasn't great. Is that the manager's fault, Rob? That they're creating, that they're having 70 shots and they're not scoring the goals? I mean, um, that's a team that's looking de- defensively better. Yeah. It's definitely winning the ball yeah. back better, there, more organised, and it's creating chances there, too. There's an argument about how clinical they are. I saw some of the stats, I was reading before the game and, and you make, you're making notes that I think there's only been on three or four occasions they've got second goal in games. That give them, so they've either scored one or less goals. So that's never given the comfort position. Now, it would seem through stats and expected goals and all that, the numbers are good. So yeah. we then come to Rob, a couple of things and, and, and we talked about. Um, the forward line is probably not flourishing as well as I would I thought it would. Agreed. Marcus Rashford's a struggle. Christi- yep. uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's been a bit up and down even by his stand. I think it's no goals in, in five now. Cavani came in, looked lively, but obviously with his aid and, 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 and didn't score. Jaden Sancho's having a couple of moments, but not quite the level. So all of a sudden, you've, you've, yeah, better, it looks better. Yeah. You've, you've got a, a front line that's, that's not firing. Hmm. I, I just want to take you back to, and it's not a case of, because we agreed in, in many things we saw in the first half, and I did like the, the pivot of, of Bruno and, and Pogba. My, my worry with that pivot, my worry with the control of the game, because my worry for Ragnar is seeing bits that I like, seeing moments I like, seeing periods of I like, not quite seen a 90 minute performance right. yet and, and and i don't you know does that is that him is that the players what is that you know a feeling amongst the group i don't know but that my my sort of worry with the pogba bruno axis rob is 
great when we're on top of the ball and playing well. When we haven't got so much control, when we haven't got the ball, is there enough in that middle of the field to help McTominay or Fred or whoever's sitting there against better teams? Because if that's the way we're going to go, that's what Liverpool do, that's maybe what a Chelsea can do. Can Manchester United do that as well, sort of toe-to-toe with three in midfield and with three forwards? Yeah, it's a fair point and it's a very valid point. And in certain games, Rob, we're going to be looking at it as midfield mm. players. We're going to look mm. at that and look yeah. at the help that McTominay is getting. But he's got the option and I like that he tried the option. It's Burnley. You know, yeah. they expected to go yeah. there and control mm. position, which they did in the first 45 minutes. Um, but you make a valid point about the whole 90 minutes. I mean, I mean what, what, you know, it was a difficult job to go into in terms of yeah. trying to get this, this group to play like a team. We yeah. saw that under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this season, I've said it, you know, I said it a couple of times that the players were allowed to run wild and there's mm. no kind of organisation. They'd lose a couple of goals, they'd come back and score three and it was kind of dramatic and, and crazy. Yeah. He has stopped that. Yeah, it's just moving through the gears <laughs> and finding ways to win games, get results, um, and it, it, you know it maybe it's going to take a little bit of time to get a full yeah. ninety minutes good performance. Can can I throw this one at you though a little bit about yeah. this group? When they start to suffer, they sometimes fold. They were one 0 up against Burnley. Burnley didn't play well. Four four two. We know what Sean Dyche big. Big Austin's up front with, with Rodriguez, you know, the Chris Wood's gone. He's got uh, Corne and, and McNeil trying to get forward, mate. It wasn't happening for Burnley. We knew what Sean Dyche would go in and say. He would get the team revved up. They'd start to play more like Burnley play. The moment Burnley kicked into gear and got into the, the second half, they dominated possession, they won knockdowns and they got themselves a goal. Now, the good teams in this league withstand that Rob and come out after 15 minutes and then kick on again and whether they, you win it 1-0 but it's just this this group somehow you know I, I, I love hearing Tuchel and Klopp and, and, and sometimes Pop says it but less so because of City's dominance but sometimes we have to suffer and go through that suffering and Chelsea do have, have done it and Liverpool do it Manchester United at the moment don't see like the resilient and one of your dual like they, they go through that suffering and knowing that we're going to... We've got 15 minutes to, to deal with Burnley, put their fires out a little bit, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the game. A different centre-half next to Varane in this game mm. might have seen it out at 1-0. They got a Maybe. couple of decisions in the first half, the, the VAR. Yeah, the VARs, uh, yeah. The, the two goals, yeah. disallowed goals. Yeah, but, but we are where we are. We're 1-0 up at yeah. Burnley. They haven't That's played great. well. For 15 minutes, Sean Dyche is going to get them at it. Now we've yeah. got to match fire with fire, haven't we? And, and, and yeah. deal with that and then come out the other end. And Maguire didn't. Yeah. Maguire didn't. Well, I, it's, I hard, it's, it's hard to say just Maguire. It's hard to say just Maguire, well, I when, think. When they, the, the goal that was scored, like it was pretty pretty poor defensive that he's allowed to turn inside him. Mm. And, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's certainly something to watch. I'm My, my thoughts are, though, that, that, that it shouldn't be flippantly this manager and what he's trying to do disregarded and who's next this ain't good enough it's lazy it's a lazy way of talking about manchester united when you look at them and you know what they were in the last the, the, the months before he's trying to make them more of a team rob and i think everybody must appre well not appreciate it but but understand that that's yeah, the right way to it, go what, even yeah. if it's not super fluid mm -hmm. and it hasn't been it was better in the first half in terms of creating stuff they just got the one goal where maybe, like Middlesbrough and like some others, yeah. they should be finishing yeah. it off. And I think you make a good point. The front players aren't scoring. We've mm. just watched Liverpool. We'll talk about Liverpool in a little bit. God, talk about front players that are, that are incredibly hungry to score goals. Sancho was better, by the way, Rob, I thought. Yeah, this it was game. better. He looked more yeah, confident. Yeah, on the left-hand left -hand side. side, yeah. Rashford is... Do you get a couple of moments that might mm. produce something, but probably doesn't? Um, Cavani was at a poor game. Ronaldo came on, so... I, it, it's not a brilliant team of players, Rob, which which I know that Man United expect to have. So a combination of that, the manager trying to find a way to be to to be solid and to then to create and score, it's not an easy job. And uh, we'll see. You know, it's, yeah. it's who have they got the weekend? They play the first game, don't they? Early seven thirty Eastern time. Yes, Southampton. Uh, Peacock. It's Southampton at home. Yeah. yeah. Who, so, are we, who, um, are we who are we going to talk about now? Yeah. We'll have a quick word on that one because let, let's take it to. The new White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, Antonio Conte in charge of the team. And, and certainly, I think we've seen his influence, a difference in Spurs. 
Um, this was his first defeat at home. Uh, two, well, two three to Southampton. Um, I think we both were incredibly impressed with with the Southampton team, well set up by Ralph Hasenhurtl, uh, a Tottenham team that didn't have much possession in the first half or play enormous counter attack, got themselves ahead through an own goal, but never ever really looked like they were controlling the, the game, Rob. And should, let's let's talk Southampton first. I think on this one because I, I think sometimes we don't get in, we don't sometimes give teams enough credit outside the, the, the big six. This this group of players, Rob, when you look from top to bottom, are average Premier League players generally. Broge is a, te- a talent on, on loan. Will Prowse is a technical, yeah. um, very technically gifted midfield player. Um, but when you look elsewhere, a Walker Peters who was to- wasn't good All enough right. to Tottenham let out the door. Yeah. Perot on the left hand yeah. side. Yeah. Benaric, Salus- Salusu, people have been Romeo. Joe Armstrong's a good player. Uh, Romeo's yeah. got some pedigree. Good. Shea, Shea Adams, you know, still kind of mm. proving himself at this level. So, what what. This turns to me, and I'm going to go straight for it early on, Rob, is the value of a coach and the quality of coaching can improve the team as well as individuals. And I'm going to go straight away for my underappreciated performer of the week is Ralph Hasenil. Oh. Right in there, Ralphie. Yeah. And, and it was really interesting. I don't know if you, if you saw this week. Um, there was some chat where he was saying, you know, he's been four or five years at this club, which is... A great testament to him, really, that he's continued at his club. He's continuing to improve players. They've lost players, you saw, in investor guards and people in the summer. And he could, still continues to do well. I know some people thought they'd be in the relegation bottom three. I won't say who. was not very far away from me sitting on the other side <laughs> of the camera. Um, but he continues to play. He gets on loan players. We talk about Brogia and, and, and Walker-Peters and the likes. And... There was talk this week, Rob, where I heard him saying, you know, I'm not going to be Roy Hodgson, I'm not going to be forever, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be staying in the game. And I just think, you know what, there's a real coach here. There's a real coach yeah. who, and I don't want to be disrespectful to Southampton, but could make the next step up. That's yeah, how I mean, good I think he is in this yeah. group are. Yeah, I mean, we they they were disappointing last season. They lose some important players in Danny Ings and Vestergaard, etc. And that had us, well, certainly me, thinking... They could struggle this year. They could get relegated. Um, but, of course, a sign of Amanda Brogia is a great yeah. one. And you're back to the, the, the coaching ability. I mean, this 4-2-2-2, which he yeah. played, uh, battered Spurs. Battered it. Battered them. Like, they couldn't. They couldn't. I mean, it was I mean, it was so impressive, Rob. It was so impressive, given, you know, Spurs that are, that are buzzing with their new manager. They've got this yeah. new stadium. Yeah. You know, the front players are Mora, Kane, and Hyunmin Son. Um and yet, Southampton had the the confidence and the ability and the tactical understanding and and they're in, how they're used to it and they're grooved in it. Play through them all the time. Ellie and yeah. Armstrong, in off the wings, in bet- in between the, the midfield players. I mean, they they had so much ball. I mean, it was the the football, the possession, the territory, and the pressing. Everything that you want in a performance, he saw it. Afterwards, he said, Rob, that that's. You know, I'm not sure we can play any better than that. That's probably the best mm. that we've ever played since I've been at the football club. And many people said the same thing. And everybody who watched that first half is like applauding at seeing a team like that can outplay a team like Spurs. It's well coached and it's well organised. Mm. And they've got their own issues, which we'll get to. Um, but you're right that we spend a bit, of, a bit of time on Southampton and give love to the manager and give, give love to some of these players. And you make a great point that there, that there isn't... I mean, yeah. Ward Prowse is a special player. This crossing yeah. ability for two yeah. of the goals is is mm. ridiculous. It's stunning. Um, it's interesting, Rob, because I watched I watched the highlights again because we, we were talking about when we his assists, his two assists. But I tell you yeah. what he does quite cleverly. So they play that two 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 where they roll in the wing players. Yeah. And then when yeah. that happens, he often drifts himself out a little bit to give him, he buys a bit of space because mm. everybody else is in the middle. And that's where he starts his deliveries. And I saw a couple of, almost yeah. looks to me like it's a tactic to narrow everything in and then can we get him out there and get him on the ball delivering in, into the box. Really yeah. smart, really smart yeah, play. It's a good, it's good shout, yeah. And, and that first time, right-footed crosses yeah. are on the money every single time and um, mm. created two of the goals. So, yeah, underappreciated, Ralph uh, Hasenhurtl. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good shout. And I think mm. they're up to 10th place in the Premier League right now, which is brilliant for them, Yeah, given... Yeah. You know the struggles of last season, etc. Struggling is Tottenham Hotspur, Rob, and I think we were we were like, wow, like shocked yeah, at how 
mm. how they were kind of outplayed in the first half. Yeah. Um, maybe not surprised that, that Antonio Conte at halftime gets, gets something different from them. We, we were talking yeah. whether they would make changes tactically to try and stop Southampton's dominance or whether he'd say, OK, enough's enough. How about let's have a go a little bit and let's try and press them a little bit and let's try and step up the energy a little bit. And that's what they did in the second half. It was much, much better. Big yeah. intensity from the team. Uh, and then the goals, of course, get flying in and it, it was a remarkable game. Um, but I think everybody knows at Tottenham what the problem is. It's a defensively and it's the defending players. Mm. Whether you think about Davis and Sanchez, Romero, Emerson Royal, and he plays yeah. a wing back in this system. Mm. Not wing good back enough. still no, no not wing good back enough for me, still Rob. have to de defend. You still gotta defend, they still gotta tuck around mm. to mm. clear out boards and make there's no space at the back post. He's slow to do that. That's where at least two of the goals came from. Yeah. Um, as well as Ben Davis made a slip, made an, a mistake. That's where enough. they need strengthening. I mean, where, where are we talking with Conte? Where they want to be, Rob? They, they, those players ain't good enough. No. I mean, you get rid of Walker Peters. I'd take Walker Peters over Emerson Royale. Yeah. I'll take Matt Doherty. Got, on, I'll take Matt Doherty right now on the team. Yeah, there's they, just not enough enough players. It's interesting. Just want to get your thought because I know you, you've seen a lot of Ben Kerr and I was talking about it. He came on. Got ones to get on the ball, doesn't he? Confident, gets ones to make passes. Do you see him starting soon? I mean, it was interesting. He took Hoy Bear off and it was Ben Kerr and Winks that stayed on, on the pitch, which I was a little surprised. I thought it might have left Hoy Bear there on the experience. And, and Kulusevsky came on a little bit later. Um, obviously, weren't able to influence the game that much. But I get the sense with Conti having bought them here and having done the business with Paratici and, and bought them over from, from, from Italy. He's going to want to get them in the team if things aren't going well. Fans want them in the team as well, Rob. Benton Core mm. comes on, fricks a couple of balls, keeps possession. He's he's active. He's an active player. He wants he wants the ball all the time, mm. and he's busy. He's good on the ball. He makes good passes. You know, forward passes as well. He's got yeah. he's got good yeah. ability. He's something a little bit different. He's a little bit more energetic than a than a Harry Winks, Rob, um, mm. and can play a little bit more. So I, I like the couple of signings they've brought in. Of course, they know them very well from their time together at Juventus. Yeah. Paratici is going to go there at certain times, I'm sure, to bring in the players. There's already several now, I think, from Italian football at the football club. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the fans wanted uh, Benton Court to start. He didn't. Came into the game and, and made an impact. But that's something we're going to see, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're right. And the summer will be a big one um, for Spurs. You know, again, they can see that they can see the late goal to lose this game at home to Southampton. Yeah. And we all know the front three players are what they are. And we all know that it's mostly going to be counter-attacking football, but they've got to be stronger defensively. If the foundation mm. isn't there, when teams play good football, whether it's Southampton yeah. or, or really good teams, they've got to be confident they can defend those attacks. Mm. And I'm, so, I'm, I'm still a little surprised because you'd assume that Antonio Conte, by hook or by crook, is going to find a way to be defensively stronger. And, and mostly there has been an improvement in that side, but again, yeah. it's still there. It's a nagging pain in the heel, that they're still conceding too many goals. He, he might suggest Eric Dyer would make a difference as well. He's been out a little yeah, while. Maybe. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to see a bit of an upgrade in players over the course of maybe two or three windows before we see a Conte team that I think he's happy with, that he knows he can send out, who can defend the way he wants and then play the football that the, the forwards will play. Do you, do you think he's going to get support in the, in the summer window, Rob? Is there any way... And there's a little bit of talk around the media about mm, him not mm. being happy. And if he doesn't get his own way, he's going to be on his I think these, his these 12 more months. I think there's 12 more months. I think there's two more windows. And I think he'll see if he is supported. Because he's, he's the right guy to lead this football club. Absolutely no doubt. But he's going to have to get support. Probably cost two or three windows to get where he wants. If he doesn't get the support, he's off. Absolutely. He, he won't hang around. Plus, he's working with uh, Fabio Paratici that he knows. Yeah. They yeah. did great work together before. So, you... I can't imagine he'd sort of say, I'm off. Like, you're not giving me mm, the money in the mm. summer and, and, and his director of football is there as well. I, I would be really surprised. I'm yeah. with you. I think he'll have another yeah. season and I think there will be signings. I think they will spend some money. Uh, maybe not huge money, but enough mm. to, to improve the team defensively. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about a game at Molyneux. Wolves, mm. nil, Arsenal, one. Two teams sort of vying for, for fourth spot. Uh, it was an Arsenal team that still was finding the back of the net of late, actually. Um, they do get the goal. Courtesy of uh, Gabriel, the centre back. There was a little bit of, of confusion with uh, Jose Saw came out and challenged Lacazette. Lacazette got to the ball quick, quickly. I think it, it looked at, everybody looked at far and saw that actually Lacazette won the ball cleanly. Goal stood. Arsenal go 1 0 up. 
And then Arsenal, Robbie Musto would become Arsenal. Um, find a way to get uh, a man sent off, this time Gabriel Martinelli, who I believe got two yellow cards in a five-second space of time mm. to, to get sent off. And I was reading stats after the game, and a, and a few of our, our staff who were working with us, well, that's four red cards in the last six games in all competitions. I mean... However unlucky it can be in him, that's that's going to show a lack of, of discipline, a lack of professionalism, Rob, to me. I think also another stat that I made a note of, Rob, 12, 12 red cards in the Premier League since Arteta uh, got the mm. job. Yeah, it's I mean, five more than anybody else, isn't it? It's I mean, five it's more than any other incredible team. incredible number. You know, and, mm. and a coach that, that's instilling, that, that wants to be, you know, immaculate and there's yeah. no room for error and, you know, mm. it's like, the, 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 you know, with the... The Aubameyang stuff and, and discipline issues that he's been strong on before, yet they still are losing their emotional control in certain moments in certain games. Now, Gabriel Mart- Martinelli, I think, is going to be a brilliant player. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we all lose our heads sometimes. He tries to stop the throw-in. The throw-in goes through. They're on a break yeah. a little bit, so it's allowed to continue. <laughs> it's a challenge. He, he makes another challenge straight afterwards. So, it was I very mean, Granite uh, Jacker-like, wasn't it? If that was Jacker, you'd go, yeah, that's Jacker. That's what he does. But I thought Martinelli might be a little bit smaller than that. I mean, you yeah. block off the throw-in. I mean, I think you made a point, actually, and the more I thought about it, Maybe the referee blows for the first throw and he doesn't make the second. But in a way, Martinelli also should know he's just pushed somebody as he's taking the throw. And now he's running back. Stay on your feet, don't dive in for, for a ball. And it could have put Arsenal in trouble. I mean, the Aitnery had a goal disallowed just for offside. Then Donker had a header late on that just went over the top. And, you know, fortunately, they've got the clean sheet. I think that's 11 clean sheets now for Ramsdale, who's been in good form. And it's, it's a 1 0 win that gets them the three points. But. You know, if they drop points, Rob, because of that, then, then that starts to hurt you. I mean, they're, they're missing for the next game anyway. Mm. But they needed that, Arsenal. They hadn't scored for yeah. the last, was it, four or five games or something? Yeah. They're, 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 they're goalless. They haven't been playing particularly well. That's a good win. 1-0 yeah, away at Wolves. Wolves are a good yeah. side that, that are eighth of themselves in the Premier League. So, well done, Arsenal. Again, we couldn't... You know, we had Liverpool going on in, in yeah, one monitor yeah. and trying to, to get a close look at it. So, we couldn't get a real close look at it. But 1-0 away from them at Wolves with 10 men. Uh, situation for them, well done, you know. And uh, the goal was a scrappy goal, mate. We did the highlights on our show, and uh, yeah, yeah. who cares? And like I said, the goalkeeper mm. kind of came together. I think they both kind of missed it, really, and then it went right through to Gabriel, who scored. So, yeah, Arsenal back on the winning, uh, the winning trail now, and we'll feel that they're going for the top four. I mean, there's the, that that top four spot or the fourth spot um, is totally up for grabs. And Arsenal, yeah. there's no reason why Arsenal can't be there. If they can keep everybody fit and keep it going again, but they needed to score and they needed to to get a win again, and they've done it. So well done. Yeah, a couple of games in hand on West Ham, they? I think three games in hand. They sit four points behind them at the moment. So yeah, definitely yeah. In, 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 in with a shout if they can keep a bit of bit of form going and keep their emotional control. <laughs> One, one place we know is always emotional. Um, Liverpool uh, Anfield at home to a Leicester City team that. Um, have kind of imploded a little bit of late. Lots of changes for for Brendan Rodgers' team. He had a number of big key players on the bench in terms of maybe just changing things around, giving the people a different look. Obviously unhappy with one or two players. Um, decent game for Liverpool. I thought um, started a little slowly. Leicester had one or two chances, but once they got in the groove, started to win the ball back, started to press, started to press, made opportunities. Got the goal courtesy of a set piece. I mean, a real Achilles heel for Leicester. I think that's 13 goals conceding now from set pieces. Mm. 10 from corner kicks. And Virgil van Dijk sort of just jogs his way past uh, Wilford and Dealey to get a header. Ball drops out. Jogo Jota's there. 11th goal of the season for him. Uh, and Liverpool are off and running. And they didn't have too many scares. Leicester, you know, tried to defend... Uh, stoutly, but from the moment the goal went in, it didn't seem it was always a matter of you know the next goal whether Liverpool will get it. Jota ends up getting it in the end. Nice little six yard, yard box finish, and Liverpool get the job done. Yeah, Leicester I thought got worse. I thought it started okay, four four one one shape. Mm. You know, just trying to react from the the Nottingham Forest FA Cup loss at the weekend, and then when the first goal goes in. I mean, they, they defended okay, Rob, but there was nothing going forward, was there? There was nothing. Yeah. I mean, they, they got further back, further back, further back. And and it's actually, I guess, impressive that they actually managed to stay in the game because at 1-0, you're absolutely yeah. in the game. Whatever's going on, you're going to have a mm. chance of going up the other end and scoring a goal. They had a couple of, of, of tiny looks, but mostly this was all about Liverpool confident, um, 
comfortable and they seemed to get more excited the longer the game went on. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. it, it was kind of really low energy in the first mm. kind of 15, 20 minutes. And and then uh, it'll open up the second half when uh, Mo Salah came on. <laughs> Liverpool are playing well, Rob. They're playing mm. well. Luis Diaz looks like he's going to be, a, you know, he's going to be a good fit. You know, we'll see how, how effective yeah. he is. He's quick. He works his socks off. From that left hand side, he drifts across the field, which is a little bit different to the others, different to Sadio Mane. And I guess yeah. it's okay with the manager Klopp to let him get involved with it. He's on pops up on the right hand side sometimes through the middle. He makes runs in behind Rob probably more than the others. I noticed in this game, so he'll try and get in behind to yeah. threaten the back line, which is good because Liverpool don't always have that, particularly mm. when Firmino plays. Um, you got you got Jota scoring goals. You got Mo Salah coming back and looking like he wants to, you know, get cracking at it straight away. You yeah. got Harvey Elliott come back into the field in, in midfield. You got Curtis Jones. You know, I might mention on the last podcast, Rob, it's only a few days ago now, but I, I, I feel that they're in a good spot. They're in a good mm. place for the future. Like he's slowly built, you know, not replacing, but he's adding options to this squad. Um, with some younger players that look like they're going to do really well. And I just think there's a long way to go to Man City. I get that. And Man City are heavy favourites. But the way that Liverpool look right now, for me, the way that they're playing, the options that they've got, the hunger that they're showing, they can run City all the way through. All the way through. Unless something yeah. crazy happens of it. But they look like they're up for a challenge and, and, and they're like winning every game at the moment. Yeah, I think Jurgen Klopp himself has talked about coming out this week and said this is the best group he's had around him since he's been at the, the football club. Mm. Obviously, a bit more experience, new, some new, younger legs in there, so you can start to see where the transition might look like. It's interesting as well that the next two games, I, I looked, they got Burnley and Norwich, the next two Premier League games that they play into Milan and Champions League, but get winnable games where he might be able to gain to to change things up, keep things fresh. And I think before, let's not forget, Rob, sort of as Christmas was coming, we kept on saying African Cup of Nations is going to come and Liverpool yeah. are losing Salah and Mane. Well, that's done. Mane's won it. Salah went close, but they're both back. So we saw Salah today. There's talk that Mane's had, had a, bit, uh, a couple of days rest. He'll be back for, for, for the next game. And so, you know, still in good shape. City haven't gone, you know, that far away, nine point gap with a game in hand and a yeah. big match, I believe, to play in on April, April. I believe, the ninth. It's a, it's a long way, off, Rob, isn't it? It's a, it's a it long is a long way, way but but, yeah. but in some respect, Rob, that's got to be the carrot now for for, yeah. for Liverpool. Stay in touch. Like stay in touch till we get there, and then let's get there, and then let's see what happens that day. Because that that way, we've got a real title race on. But um, can't afford to be sloppy. Can't afford to take the, their foot off the gas. But you say they've got a nice little rhythm, and a, I just feel a good sort of um, moment around the football club. Klopp seems a lot happier with things. Very few players injured. You know, most of his squad uh, fit and, re and ready to play. So, yeah, they're in a, they're just, fine. Just they're in a good more, spot. One more thought, Rob, before we move on. Like, mm. Champions League is, is upcoming again. Yeah. And we know that on, the yeah. Man City squad with a rotation mm. puts them in a great position to, to, to do that. Do you think Liverpool now are enhanced in, that, in, in, in a similar way? With Luis Diaz coming through, possibly, with, yeah, possibly. You know, the Jota's emerging. It's, they've got they've got yeah. more options now in front mm -hmm. areas than they've That's had. That's a good shout. And, and, and that might, might be some of the Premier well. League games. That might be, you know, I say in Norwich, you would play, and he might not play. He might give Salah a rest. Right. You no, know, we've just got to mention, and uh, you, you've just made me thought before we go, mate. Jogo Jota, by the way, is a little diamond. I know he's a little diamond. He's a little diamond that's coming in that football club. Probably most of us thought. As a backup to the front three, and I tell you what, mate, he, he, his his movement, his football IQ, his positioning, his little goal scoring, he gets the goals that Bobby Firmino's never going to get. The toe pokes, the the, the ball drops down, the right place. Yeah, the, he's, the, not gonna, the, he's not going to link the play the same. He's not going yeah, to. He's not going to back and back heel and, like, and like, drop his yeah. shoulder. But he's a goal scorer, and, and when Liverpool, you know. Need something different on days when it hasn't. He's he's become the something different for totally. them. When the football yeah. doesn't quite work, when they're not scoring worldy goals, when the fullbacks are not going down and creating all kinds of habit, they've got a real six-yard box goal scorer who can get you out of trouble. Do you think when he first came, Rob, like you said, it was like, well, you know, he's there to, to come in mm. and it'll, over a period of time, he'll... And then, then he started a lot of games and, wow, yeah. he's done pretty well. Mm. Are they going to share the time now with Firmino and Jota? Absolutely. I think we're at a point now 
Well, I don't think there's any question. I, I mean, maybe in some games you want some experience with Firmino. Maybe in the biggest games, yeah. like, he might maybe. start ahead of Diogo Jota. But I think we're going on a on a on a track of he's going to be the number. He's going to be the number one well, pick for the number nine, the central position, that front three. I think these four, these four, they've got four main strikers now, Rob. I don't think there's anything between. I don't think when one plays, it's a drop off or not. I mean, it's just horses for courses, different games. You might have, want different personalities. But it yeah. certainly ain't, ain't, there ain't a front three and the others finally. There's a front four now for it. Well, for, five, for Rob. Liverpool. It's five. If you put in Luis Diaz in that as well. Yeah, but I wouldn't quite put Diaz in. I wouldn't quite put Diaz at that level yet. But I would yeah. say it's a front four with, with the Diaz and, you know, all the younger players to come in. But yeah, uh, that's what Jogo Jot has done. I mean, he's got 12 Premier League goals, mate. Only Mo Salah's got more in the, right. in, in the Premier League. I mean, it's ridiculous yeah. little numbers. So, um, good day for Liverpool. Uh, mm. Not another great day for Leicester. And got to do some work on set pieces, Leicester. Just, you know, yeah. stay yeah. with your man. Manchester City 2, Brentford 0. I think we pretty much expected uh, City to get this one done. We had Mahrez with a penalty kick after um, Ryan Sterling, I believe, the most, one of the most penalties in Premier League history now, 23, just with that look pace and change of direction, um, draws the foul, uh, gets the foul, and, and, and Mahrez puts it away. And then Kevin De Bruyne finishes it off with a typical Kevin De Bruyne, heavy right foot slap. Yeah. After yeah. uh, Sterling's missed a chance, and Manchester City keep ticking along, mate. They do. Um, again, the, the the changes up front are, are always numerous. Sterling back on the left hand side. Mm. I feel like we, we haven't seen Ryan Sterling playing on the left consistently for quite a long time now. Jack Grealish, of course, uh, has been playing there, but didn't start the game. Was on the bench, and that's this is what you get at this football club if you're not. And he's been given a, a good run of games to yeah. to to really start scoring and producing the assists and the goals he hasn't. And, you know, he might be out, out of the team for a little bit now. Um, but Sterling, of course, and, and Phil Foden, I think is the best false nine at the club to do that position. Played that position again. Mara's on the right-hand side. I mean, yeah. I mean, what what can you say? I mean, it, it's it, it's almost automatic, isn't it, with some of these games, mm -hmm. particularly at home uh, against the the smaller teams, that they're going to find a way to score, and whoever it might be. De Bruyne and the midfield players, Mara's with a penalty. So... Yeah, I mean, job done. Still have that gap at the top. Um, and others like Liverpool will just hope that at some yeah. point they'll chuck in another Crystal Palace loss or some random mm. game where they're not quite at it and they give it, up yeah. some points. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously they've got the Champions League coming up, mate. Does Do you think anything changes for Pep or does he just continue down the same road? League games, league games, I'll take that comes. Or does his focus at some point sort to be because it's the one thing now that people can bash isn't it well he hasn't we haven't won the champions league oh he's not won the champions league with them it, it, does he will that affect him do you think in any way i don't i don't think so robert i don't think we should expect anything different in these in the mm. subsequent knockout rounds there'll be rotation we've said it a million times there's no there's no best team there is, there's mm. a really best team he's got like three or four best teams yeah. and there's certain important players but not that many it might not be Diaz that plays, it might be Stones that plays, mm. it might be Mahrez, it might be uh, Grealish, it might... So, I, I think he believes in his squad. I think the rotation will be there. It's, it's, it's how they've been so consistent because they can rest players all the time. It's mm. just the final rounds, isn't it, Rob? I, I mm. think, you know, it's going to take some effort to beat them over two legs until you get... Unless I, we'll see what the draws bring up. But, mm. you know, around the semi-final time, then there might be more of a focus on what's my best... My, what I feel is my best eleven. We thought we knew that into the blimmin' final of last year yeah, for yeah. him to change, change and, and make some yeah. crazy yeah. stuff that I'm, mm. I'm sure I am sure he'll never do that again uh, and not play one of his Fernandinho or Rodri's um, but no I, I you know go again and they'll try and find a mm. way and, and maybe this is the year for them um, but it might put a little bit more pressure on the, the league games and they might yeah, yeah. risk conceding just take something. a little bit yeah yeah it might do might do yeah. It's interesting, mate, and, and, and it's a conversation I, I'm not going to bring up now because it could be one of those that um, I think I, I heard a, a really interesting pub debate. I don't know if you saw Thomas Frank sort of said after the game, thought his team did quite well, you know, we were playing the best team in the world and Pep kind of went, we're not the best team in the world and blah, blah, blah. And there was this kind of argument and I heard a, a kind of radio debate after and then sort of like, has Pep produced the best Premier League team ever and I know it's a bit poor and a bit ringy but then people started to say well you know the United teams with Ronaldo and Tevez and Rooney the Arsenal Invincibles yeah. you know the City Centurions, Centurions. Mm. the Chelsea 0405 under Jose like 
50, only 15 goals conceded, only one loss all season. Yeah, the Liverpool intensity, heavy amount of football, the, the Leicester City sort of Claudio Ranieri is, is you know, who's the greatest, who's produced the greatest Premier League t- team? And I thought, well, you know, one day, one day on the pod, we might sit and, and have a little discussion about that, maybe mm. compare and contrast one or two. But it was yeah. interesting where Pep, Pep, was, Pep was at this place where I'm not worried about those things. I, I worry about the hunger of my team and then being ready for what's required week in, week out. And he said, we play Brentford, the team that's promoted, the team that wants to beat us, and we go about our business in the right way. That's the thing that impresses him more than anything else. Yeah, I think so. I think he's, he's a master at d- d- casting off some of these mm. some of these quotes and some of these stories and some of these kind of comparisons and stuff like that. I think I think you know the squad that they have this year, Rob, and the ability to change uh, many players and hardly any effect on the team. I'm not sure we've seen that before. Mm. There's a you could argue forever about the best eleven of City and some of these other teams. Which is the yeah. best? Yeah, really tough. Like there's some mm. brilliant teams, but in terms of the squad. And the way that it changes, I, I, I honestly can't remember another team having so so much fluidity and options uh, yeah. for different games in different weeks and, and, and the squad. I mean, I, I don't know whether there's been a better squad mm. and the way it's coached with Pep Guardiola in the Premier League era. But um, yeah, but yeah, that's for another day, mate. That's gonna, Yeah, absolutely. That for will take a day. while. <laughs> for today, let's talk about Newcastle United because they got themselves the third win of the, of the season. Scored three goals against Everton. St. James Port was buzzing. Eddie Howe was jumping up and down the, the, the touchline. Amanda Staveley and the ownership group were hugging and, and high-fiving and all sorts in, in the director's box. Frank Lampard didn't look quite so happy on his side. A bit of a reality for him mm. and Everton, uh, Musty. Um, Newcastle needed that. I thought gives them hope uh, because they've just got to start putting some wins together now. They, they've got the group here and they've got Grimares and and, Kip, and, and Trippier and uh, Dan Target Burn. and Dan Burn yeah. and Chris Wood. So that's who we're going with now. We've got a group. Now they've got to start putting some results together and get themselves out, out, out of trouble. Yeah, and they have. And this is a great result, wasn't it? What a brilliant mm. result. And, and mm. I think St. James is going to be buzzing. It's absolutely going to be buzzing every single game. You know, obviously home mostly. To the end yeah. of the season, they always take a, a lot of fans away games anyway. They all wanted to see Bruno Gamares, the new Brazilian kid they've got, yeah. start the game. He didn't. He came on. Um, he's going to be a player. He's going to be a player for them for a long time. He's a, he's a central midfield player that that's going to be exciting to watch. Can do a little bit of everything. He's not. He's a little bit different to your. To your he's not a mm. big guy, you know. He's but he, he can do all sorts of things in midfield. He's a dribbling midfield player, very technical, very good player. So he will. I think he'll do a really great job at the football club. But yeah, the wins are coming and there's other players to come back in the side, you know, whether it's Dan Byrne defensively, he's still worry a little bit about Newcastle United, but, yeah. you know, he's finding a way to to integrate these new players and, and making them a little bit stronger. Um, Everton on the other side, Rob, you know, I think I remember talking about Frank Lampard's appointment in the last pub, wasn't it? Where, yeah, you were mm, saying, yeah, like, you weren't mm, sure. Mm. Not sure. Like, and, and now, like, you know, the weekend, Rob, what it's the, it's the, it's the second Leeds. game in. Ever- yeah. Leeds. Everton v Leeds. I could Everton see. v Leeds. I mean, wow, what a, what a big game that is for Everton. What a big two game point, it is. Two points from the bottom three, Everton, right now. I mean, you've got, you've got to think, Rob, right? And, and the only thing, like, Cavalier was on the bench, Van der Beek and Deli Alley. Now, yeah. Their best eleven, right? And we're assuming, by the way, that the the Cavalier is, is is going to be okay mm. after his injury. Mm. We're assuming he gets back to his level that he's capable of, yeah. and we're assuming that Donny Van der Beek is going to improve their midfield, and we're assuming that Deli Ali is going to is going to get back to somewhat. And I'm not saying even eighty percent. If he if he gets to seventy five percent of what he was before, he can add something. That's the, that's when you sort of conclude. Well, there's enough here. There's enough mm. here. To stay in the division and find a, a little run of form. You, Can I just you, say that's a lot of assuming you've done that, yeah, no, by the way. I, you, I, you're I, assuming I, and assuming. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? Well, that's that's where Everton yeah. are. They're assuming yeah. Frank Lampard's going to be okay for this job and there's going to be okay in a relegation fight where mm. I'm not sure he's ever had one before. So that, that, that Everton, it, 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 it ends up being kind of gambly, like a little bit risky, like good names, like certainly good names to come in and mm. and you're hoping that it's all going to work out. What, what's your gut telling too many, you? Too many, you? Too, many, too many good players for me, Musty, to, to go down. And good players, if only they play one game in four, can have 
three, four games between now and the end of the season have enough points to beat. That would be my thing. Yeah. And if you can get hold of the ball and get them with possession and, and make them feel better about themselves and play with a bit of confidence, there shouldn't be there should be no trouble. But and there is a massive but here. This is Everton. And we don't know. We don't know. We this is this Frank with the new challenge and I've said the rigor I think will do him good to 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 to, to be spooked a little bit by what a relegation could be and could mean. So that he's going to have to learn his trade and, and, and tactically be right and the personnel be right and the systems be right and make changes when they need to and, and, and get his team uh, possessing the ball and playing with confidence. This is why he's been given the job. This is what Premier League managers have to do. Ralph Hasenhurtle has coached this Southampton team that looked at one point like they were going to be bottom three into a position where they go to White Oak, the new White Oak Lane and, and play Spurs off the field. Everton can do that with that quality player, but Frank's got to get it out of them. He's got massive decisions, Rob. Decisions mm. everywhere you look. Mm. But what team to with play? No with, 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 not, with, with no experience. With no real experience. Yeah, with mm. limited experience. And decision-making mm. is a coach sat on the sideline there. Yeah. And there was moments, Rob, at Everton to, to Chelsea. Remember, we used to say, God, he looks miserable. You know, he looks <laughs> unhappy. And he looks frustrated. Yeah. Mm. Now, if ever, you know, ever. When you're in a relegation fight, you, you don't need your manager to be that way. Mm. Absolutely, you don't. You, you need the manager to be strong, confident, like, we've got this. Uh, that's what you need. And, and uh, I'm not saying he's not going to do that, but but we don't know. I'm just going back to, to looks when he was at Chelsea, where he looked kind of down and miserable mm. and fed up with it all. So, again, we don't want to paint a doom and gloom picture. And mm. the players that they've got, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to get relegated. But this is a big game against a team that will transition uh, in Leeds United that are dangerous. They're, they're, they're a story in themselves this mm. season as well. And they have, they've, for them, they've had a poor season. They're yeah. still missing their biggest players in Calvin Phillips and Patrick Bamford. Bamford's been out, I think, pretty much all the season. Um, they could be dangerous. What a game yeah. that was, by the way, Robbie Hill. Aston Villa versus Leeds United, 3-3. Huh. Yeah. Uh, what a game it was and, and what entertainment and... Uh, you know, the little, I think magi the little magician's back in it. Yeah, a great advert for Premier League football. The yeah. little magician is back. He's back. I mean, how good is he, mate? I think he's got as many as sisters. I think yeah. I've got a stat as Jack Greenish or something already. Yeah, and Sancho, I think, or something. Two goals and, and two assists now, isn't he? I think four goal involvements. Yeah, he's a special talent, and I, I, I mm. bet the Villa fans are buzzing. I bet they're absolutely loving and, it. And you should also mention, I think you gave him underappreciated player of the week, couple of weeks ago as well. Jacob Ramsey, my friend. Oh. Little mid little midfield powerhouse. Yeah. Who can get forward, who's got good feet, who's got an eye for goal, who's got a manager who was one of the best we've ever seen in the Premier League at, at doing that. He, he, he's going to be some player, this kid. Oh, it really is. And you look at the, the other midfield players in there. I mean, there's got good options. John McGinn's mm. a good player, Douglas, so he's can sit in there. But I think, you know, they, they're more the names. Jacob Ramsey, I'm not sure what his numbers are. I haven't got the numbers to me yet right here, yeah, but it seems like we we'll watching him play. Yeah. I mean, he's always getting in there and he's creating stuff. And he's, I think one was a right foot, one was a left yeah. foot. Uh, that, that ability to go forward from midfield, as you said, with Stephen Judd probably giving him little bits of words of wisdom to try and help him. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I, but I think the Philip Coutinho is obviously the headline. Catalyst, hit the yeah. ground running, mm. like he's never been away, enjoying his football. I'm sure the fans are loving it. Villa Park, in this sort of form and confidence, is a great place to play the football. Um, so well done to him. But Leeds United, Rob, always in it, always in yeah. it. Um, and I'm going to chuck on. I'm going to chuck in my underappreciated to a player that kind of got moved out of Manchester United. That that. You know, wasn't deemed to be good enough, really. Um, Dan James, a couple of goals in this game. A little slow, I would say, to really make an impact at Leeds United. Difficult in a team that's been struggling for the most part of the year. But the first goal particularly, I thought, really clever turn and move and, and, and to squeeze it into that far far corner. Mm. A player that, I don't know, underappreciated. I, like, may, maybe United was never his level. But it's nice yeah. to see a player that's talented, that's quick, that has a great attitude, that works very, very hard, that's kind of ideal for Leeds mm. and Bielsa wanted him for a long period of time, doing well, doing well. So maybe he has been underappreciated at Manchester United and maybe he has a little bit at Leeds United. So it's good to see him score a couple of goals, make an impact, be 
a player that, that that can step up and score in the absence of Patrick Bamford. So I just thought it's time to tip my hat to to Dan James in a, in a, in a really good game and a good performance from him. Um, yeah, so he gets my award for this this uh, midweek. Yeah, good shout. It looks like he, you know, you would think he's a perfect fit for a Leeds team and maybe cut these couple yeah. of goals, just give a bit of confidence and he, yeah. he can kick on from there. A couple of other results we had. Norwich City won, Crystal Palace won. Norwich City uh, got the fastest goal of the Premier League this season. 38 yeah. seconds, Tamo Puki fires one in, but uh, Palace score an equaliser through a lovely Wilf Saha goal from about 20 odd yards and then Wilf from 12 yards. Maybe slipped or lost his foot, you know, lost his concentration. Somehow pulls the ball wide, and was, if you, it's one of those you watch again and think, "How has he done that?" Somebody of that mm. talent. So uh, I think Patrick was dis- disappointed with the overall result, the start from from his Palace team, but obviously, um, you know, could have gone on to win it with the penalty kick. But mm. a, a point of piece for both of those teams. And then the other game, Rob, that had some headlines both on and off the pitch: West yeah. Ham United won, Watford nil. West Ham United, courtesy of uh, Jared Bowen, sort of deflected shot, gets the goal. But many of the headlines um, were stolen by Kurt Zuma and the negative um, press around, you know, what we saw with, with the um, his cat and, and, and the, the animal cruelty and, and the knock-on effect that this has had, Rob, really, with, yep. with, with Zuma, with yep. West Ham, with sponsors and just, I think, public opinion uh, uh, of this football club and, and how maybe players should be dealt with in these situations. The club, you said it, Rob, when we chatted, I think, uh, this morning. Yeah. The club should have taken charge of this. Mm, absolutely. It shouldn't have been David Moyes picking a team. They should have, mm. have pulled Kurt Zuma to the side and say, this is the mm. this behaviour is not acceptable at our football club. Yeah. They've subsequently yeah. said that there's a two-week wages fine, which apparently mm. is the most you can find. I'm not sure that's 100% true, but in our mm. day it was. Two weeks wages was the yeah. most you could find. And yeah. You know, discipline it, and the, the RSPCA have been around to take his cats away to to um to assess the situation. He's probably going to lose his cats. Their sponsorship, Vitality, I think, is is pulled out of sponsoring. He's lost his his own personal sponsor. I think Robin and Adidas. Yeah, for, I, Adidas. For I think he's sponsored. Yeah. So it, it was like he shouldn't have played in the game, Rob. Should he? No, he no. Shouldn't he shouldn't, he shouldn't have shocking. been involved. He should. It should not have been involved. And listen, David Moyes, whether he wants to make a football decision, sort of talked about being one of their best players, I believe, or something like that. Should have been totally taken out. The football club should have said he doesn't. He, you know, he's taken out. He's not even in the squad today. Whether he doesn't turn up, but we don't want him at the stadium. Blah, blah blah blah. And then I think because of that, and then you move forward, you have a chance to move on. But I think it, it's badly backfired on, on West Ham, quite rightly to to, to some degree. And I don't think we've heard the last of, of it yet, Rob. And, and it was a shocking thing for, for Zuma to do. And he's now going to have to deal with the consequences. Well, I think there's, there's, there's pressure on him not playing the next game this weekend. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. I can't, you can't, be, you, you, you've, you've sort of failed to understand what goes through some yeah. people's heads at certain times. Mm. And his, his brother was there with him, Rob, with the videoing. And as if it yeah. was some kind of... Apparently he's uh, got banned now, hasn't he, from his club. I think, is it Dagenham and Redbridge? Redbridge yeah, and he's, he's been, been suspended, been I think, hasn't he, from his club. So, for, for things yeah, a real, a real yeah. horrible incident that you yeah. know we have to comment on it's just a, it was shocking and uh mm. and i thought handled really badly and i think everybody yeah. feels that in, way in, in, in what's mean, been a brilliant season for west ham yeah. a brilliant team for david moyes and you know they're almost becoming people's second team you know working on look how they, they've gone from one team playing a certain way to this you know know what you're going to get give everything you know skillful players giving their all and this has just tainted that a little bit yeah. and um we'll see how obviously the next week or two Things play out there at Upton Port. Listen, mate, that was the midweek that always mattered. Top of the table, Man City win again, but a Diogo double. It got enough for Liverpool, I think, to give us a title race. While in the basement, Newcastle proved too much for an Everton team that are too good to go down, aren't they? <laughs> we'll be back on Super Bowl Sunday. That's on 13th of February this week when we'll look back at all the games from match week 25 and that's before the big game when the Rams take on the Bengals in the magnificent Sophie Stadium we'll be there sitting outside the SoFi Stadium for Super Bowl 56 and we're going to try and get in there and have a look at things Mr Musto and I but for now I'm Earl he's Musty together with the two Robbies thanks for watching and listening be safe be healthy it's a good night from me and it's a good night from him good night good night
there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.